Welcome to Vora Motors. Today we will be replacing the front motor on the eMove Roadrunner. For this task, you will need a 5mm hex key, 4mm hex key, 18mm socket wrench, electrical tape, string, a pen tool, two spoon tools, scissors, gloves, and of course a new front motor. First, we will use our 5mm hex key to unscrew the four screws under the seat. Once unscrewed, lift the seat up and hang it off to the side. Cut the zip tie holding the wires together. Unpack the contents so you can look around easier. Find the front controller and locate and unplug the motor wires in the motor hall. Take your pin tool and take out the pins out of the motor hall one at a time. Follow the method performed on screen. After removing the pins, cover them with a plastic sheath. Then use a string and tie the wires together to the motor hall cables. Use electrical tape to cozy these wires together. Cut the zip ties holding the motor wires along the frame. Unwind the wire cover. Now take the wire at the front and pull it out. Cut the excess string on the end that you tied to the cables. Make sure there is enough string left over to tie for the new motor when it comes time. Take the tape and string off of the wires. Now use a 5mm hex key to unscrew the brake caliper. Let it hang off to the side. Use an 18 mm socket wrench to unscrew the motor bolts. The weight balance will change after removing the wheel, so be careful that the scooter doesn't fall back. Bring the front wheel to a workstation and remove the disc rotor. Unscrew each screw with a 4 mm hex key. Remove excess air from the inner tube. This will help with the next steps. We sprayed our rim with water to further assist with removal. Next, we place our spoon tools along the same side and move them into the opposite direction until the tire merges over the rim. This is not an easy task, so be patient and keep trying if you don't get it on your first try. As the tire comes off, be careful to not damage the air valve. You have successfully removed the front motor. It's now time to place on our new motor. Before we begin, go ahead and deflate the inner tube even more. Now line up the air valve with the rim and insert it. Follow our method as you would wind the rest of the tire into the rim. We use water to help with the process. Use your spoon tool to assist the lift off the tire and the rim where needed. Once one side of the tire is over the rim, use your palms and spoon tool to push the remaining excess. Now take your wheel and fill it with air to the recommended PSI. Now screw your rotor back on. Use a four millimeter hex key to screw in the six screws. Before placing the wheel back on the scooter, ensure that these washers have their accented end towards the ground on both sides. Push the motor into the frame and screw in the motor bolts back in with the 18mm socket wrench. Before moving forward, ensure that the motor cables emerges from the correct side of the scooter so that you can unwind it into the body. Another thing to check will be the wobble, so ensure that the tire is on right before moving forward. Take the string from earlier and find the part emerging at the front. Tie that piece to the new motor wires and then tape them. Pull the string at the other end while pushing the cable from the front. Do this until the whole cable emerges into the cavity. Remove the tape and string it now. 
Take your pin tool and ensure that the motor hall pins have their fins sticking up before installing them once more. Insert each pin one at a time and push them in until they click. Connect the motor hall once all the cables are sent, followed by the motor cables. Yellow goes to yellow, blue goes to blue, and green goes to green. Test out the front motor before putting everything neatly away. If the front motor accelerates, then you are good to organize the controller amongst the wires and close up the main cavity. Place the seat on top and line up the screw holes. Use a 5mm hex key and screw in the seat until it's firm. Now take your wire cover and wrap it over the cable starting at the motor and working your way towards the scooter body. Zip tie the wrapped cable to the two slots from earlier. Now use your 5mm hex key and screw in the front caliper back onto the frame. If you notice any sounds coming from the front, try to realign your brakes but also check that the disc rotor isn't bent. If it is bent, the best way to find the bend is to slowly turn the wheel until you notice the scraping sound or until you can see it with your own eyes. You can use your hands to bend the rotor back. This may take time, so be patient. If there is still scraping after this, use a piece of tape to hold down the throttle at a constant slow speed. Loosen the caliper and move it slightly until there is no more scraping. Tighten it back down once more once you have solved the scraping. Lastly, place the nut covers back on and you're all set. Thank you for watching and let us know if you have any comments or suggestions for future videos in the comment section below.